This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hello everyone and welcome to my new Dory Paint video. Well guys, today I have received probably the most exciting package ever, really. I've opened the box, I realized what was inside, so I immediately threw some decent clothes on and sat in front of the camera, and here I am, hello. And decent clothes, I mean the clothes that doesn't have lots of acrylic spots everywhere from acrylic paint. So, and I am so excited because today I've got a bunch of brand new Monster High dolls. Check them out. Really, these dolls are extremely difficult to get here in Europe. I was looking for them yeah, since the beginning, since the very release date, hoping that they would appear, I don't know, officially or unofficially. I really expected some maybe third party, some other companies buying some of these dolls in America and bringing them here. But no, it didn't happen. You still cannot buy these dolls in Europe, so I've actually ended up buying these dolls from America, like from the official Amazon store. You can buy them in the UK, but actually for me it doesn't matter because I still would pay taxes when I bring things to the European Union from the outside of the European Union. So, ordering these dolls from the United States was a little bit cheaper. And actually these dolls arrived very quickly, maybe some short information for other European customers, for other European Monster High lovers. You can really order them on Amazon, on American Amazon. It's like an official page where they sell these dolls. Uh, the tax will be automatically included to your checkout price. So, and that's it. Then here in, in Europe, in Belgium, I didn't have to pay anything, I didn't have to provide any invoices, I didn't have to go through all these custom clearance procedures. They literally, on Wednesday, they arrived to Belgium and Thursday I received them here in my house. So, it was actually easier than I expected, but these dolls are still not available in Europe and if you want to get them, you have to, yeah, or wait, because I'm sure that someone, some companies are going to bring them here, like to reset sell but then they will be more expensive or you have to order them from the states oh, yeah. and about the price so one doll costs 25 dollar 24.99 and dollar and euro are not the same kind of at the moment so say 25 euro so and for these four dolls i've paid 150 euro and some cents and it makes them 50 percent more expensive because normally i would pay 100 dollar or euro for four dolls and I paid 150 but anyway it's still okay I'm really happy I have them all I don't have Draculaura of course I wanted to buy all of the dolls but Draculaura was out of stock looks like she's very popular but anyway I will keep looking for them uh, I will order Draculaura doll as quickly as she appears back in stock so I've got this Claudine doll it's just my first impressions. She's very cute. She's actually, I think, more cute than she was in the previous generation dolls. Very cute Claudine with very cute hair, really very pretty doll. Um, then we have Laguna Blue. Actually, I'm not sure if this Laguna Blue is better than the previous Laguna Blue. She's very cute. She really reminds me of the old one. Mm, I don't know, I'm like 80% convinced, <laughs> like, but I love the doll, she's very cute. Then we have Cleo Denial, very pretty. And then we have Frankie Stein, also very pretty, and I really love that they all have kind of different body types. I see now that Frankie has really long and skinny legs, while, for example, uh, Laguna has a little bit shorter and... I cannot say thicker legs, but yeah, <laughs> a little bit thicker legs. And you know, guys, I was actually going to repaint Frankie first, because I really love Frankie dolls, and I also have a very good vision of how I could customize her, because I want to turn these dolls kind of into themselves. Like, for example, Frankie, I want to turn into Bride of Frankenstein, uh, Laguna would become a mermaid, and so on. But... Now I see this Cleo doll and I realize that her face really looks like Nefertiti. I don't know, maybe I am I don't know, hallucinating or something, maybe it's my imagination. 
But I look at this doll and Nefertiti is really... This, this is her, this is Nefertiti. Just... I don't know, is it my fantasy, guys? Uh, this is so strange, because I have some sort of a strange relationships with Nefertiti. I had a very weird situation in my life that is somewhat mysterious for myself, but actually it's more funny, of course, than uh, mysterious. But anyway, I will tell you. Uh, it was probably about a year or two years ago. I was sitting here at home at my laptop, rerouting doll hairs for many, many, many hours. And I was watching all kinds of documentaries and lectures about Nefertiti, about Technaton, about the uh, city of Amarna, about all this civilization. And it was super exciting. And uh, I ended up watching probably you know, five or six hours of Nefertiti non stop. So I ended up watching all of this around four in the morning, probably. I went to the toilet and I saw right in front of me. <laughs> Right in front of me, really, under the sink, the head of Nefertiti, the one, like, in the big tall crown, appears that we had it there for 10 years. <laughs> like, since the moment we moved into this house, my husband put there that head of Nefertiti just as some sort of, yeah, useless decoration, just to make it, like, more fun there. And we didn't even remember about it anymore. When I was explaining my husband, telling him this story about this Nefertiti looking into my face after me looking videos about Nefertiti for six hours, my husband also didn't really understand what Nefertiti was. What, what, what did I see there under the sink? And when I really brought him there and I showed him this hat, he really started laughing because I, uh, indeed, she, she is there. She's been there already for 10 years. So, I have some sort of, of course, it's more a funny story. There is no really, like, mystical things in it. It's rather what I was thinking about for a long time. I was thinking about Nefertiti for six hours. So, when I saw her had this bust, I finally noticed it because I was really like into Nefertiti at the moment. But anyway, it's still a very special story for me. I really feel like she's kind of waving to me through all this time and space. So this morning I saw actually an article that it looks like they have found the mummy of Nefertiti. And now I see this doll's face really looking like Nefertiti. I don't know, maybe it's still, maybe it's my fantasy, but I see her being really sculpted like that famous face of Nefertiti. So, I think, sorry for this very long intro, but it's an exciting day, it's an exciting packaging, and it's also an exciting surprise, because yes, I'm going to change my plans today. I will not repaint Frankie, I will keep Frankie for some better times, maybe yeah, in two weeks or something, two, three weeks, I think I will make the Frankie doll, and today we're going to repaint this beautiful brand new Cleo Denial doll and we are going to turn her into Nefertiti. So now let's finally unbox this doll. Let's take a closer look at her face, at her body, at all these accessories and outfits and then we'll start the transformation. Please don't forget to subscribe of course, hit the like, hit the bell button, hit all the buttons and let's start working guys. So, this doll has a very pretty hair blend. It combines dark blue, light blue, and golden hair. And you know, I feel like it has been inspired by Nefertiti's blue headpiece, because the previous version of Cleo had black hair that is more natural for an Egyptian girl. So, her face is very cute. The dress is also cute. The accessories are absolutely adorable. Like, check it out, the ancient Egyptian cell phone. Then she has this busted coffee cup, also very thoughtful, very detailed. The sunglasses look really good on her. The tiny pet, really super, really love this detail. The backpack is shaped like a pyramid, also a very nice touch. So these are the eyeshadows, I guess. And she also has a burrito wrapped as a mummy. Super funny, also super cute, tiny detail. 
And she also has an extra jacket. I don't know, it gives me rather cowboy vibes, but it's also cute. So now let's undress her and let's take a look at her body. So her body is bigger, the proportions are different, she looks more normal and healthy to me, I don't know, I really like it. And this is how the new body looks next to the old one, so you can clearly see the difference. I really love that this new doll is fully articulated, this extra chest joint is a great addition, really super, very happy about it. Uh, then she has super cute monster high hands, they are exactly the same like from the old dolls. Uh, I also really love her new underwear and also this mummy wraps on her arm and leg, it's also a very nice detail. And you know, in general, I think this doll looks absolutely adorable. I probably like it even more than the old ones. Really super cute. Happy about this new release. So this is the doll. I have decided to keep her hair. I know that Nefertiti normally shaved her head like many Egyptian women did because you know it's really hot there in Egypt. It was and it is still. But I think I will keep her original hair and I will simply hide it under the headpiece. So I will now gently warm her head up with a hair dryer, trying to not melt her original hair. Then I will disconnect the head from the body and then I will remove her face with pure acetone. start this project with making her legendary blue hat piece. I want to make it first to not squeeze her face too much after repainting it. So I begin with creating the basic shape of this hat piece out of paper. Then I cut out all the details out of Warbler Thermoplastic and I build the headpiece out of it. The crown is decorated with these sort of ribbons. This is how it looks on the back, by the way, not that many people have seen it. And there also used to be a snake on the front, but it got lost and we can see just the snake's tail running up to the top of the crown. So I'm starting with making these ribbons and also the snake's tail out of Warbler Thermoplastic.
Then I'm 3D printing a couple of snakes to add one of them to the front of her headpiece. I want to add some texture to the ribbons and also to the sides of the crown to make it all kind of more finished using this 3D glue. Okay guys, this 3D glue requires 72 hours of drying before you can start painting it and it means that I have enough time to work on her face. So now I will seal her face with Mr. Super Clear sealant and then I will try to recreate the Queen's face on this doll. Okay, this is where I've ended up so far. I still need to blush her body, but I will do it a little bit later. And right now I want to make a pair of golden sandals, like these ones on the picture, out of warbler thermoplastic. And this is obviously the first time I'm making shoes for this type of a doll. So I will have to make patterns first, and just after this I will start working with thermoplastic.
So here are the sandals and the next step is painting them with acrylics and also covering them with gold. And I actually want to do the same to her crown that I made earlier because all this glue looks dry and I can start painting it. So let's paint them together. So guys, the golden sandals are finished and they look really good and really shiny, I really love them. And this is the finished headpiece and you know, I'm simply obsessed with it. I don't even know if it can be made closer to the original. I really did my best and everything worked out, I'm really happy about it. So now I can quickly blush the body and then I will make an outfit. Ancient Egyptians mostly used linen to create their clothing because cotton didn't exist there yet and wool was way too warm for the hot Egyptian climate. It was very thin and fine linen, you could literally see a person's body under it and they didn't really use sewing to make their outfits, instead they were wrapping and draping this very lightweight fabric around their bodies creating these kind of outfits that you can see now on your screen. Modern linen would look way too thick on a doll, so I've bought a piece of white silk. I think it will help me to achieve this effect of super light, half transparent fabric. So I cut out a piece of it and then I'm going to pleat it with this hair tool, because ancient Egyptian dresses often were pleated. Okay, it's not super perfect, but I think it will look good after I wrap it around the doll's body. This is 
where I've ended up with it. I've also decorated it with the ribbon and you know I think it looks really good and really close to what we've seen on a bunch of these ancient Egyptian drawings. <laughs> Now I still need to make this legendary collar necklace called Usech and you know mostly in doll making and also in cosplay people make this collar hard like out of carton or warbler or some other type of plastic and then they apply some decoration on top of it. Because this is easier of course and it looks good enough I've made it myself like this for my busted doll and also this doll originally also has this plastic imitation of this collar necklace. But in reality, these Usach collars were necklaces made out of hundreds of tiny beads. They're not hard at all, they're all movable and airy with visible free space between the beads. And this time I want to try to make it out of beads for my doll as well. I have no idea if it's gonna work, I'm a complete novice at this bead weaving or how to even call it. But I've got some beads and I'm going to try it. There will be no instructions for this project because I literally don't know what I do and I'm acting completely intuitively, that is probably a bad idea, but let's try it. So I looked at Nefertiti's necklace and I noticed that around her neck she has blue, green and red colors in gold framing. And then she has these more like longer pieces in green and red. So I will try to make something like this as well. I really cannot believe it guys, but it worked, really, check it out. I was mentally preparing for a failure and I was already thinking how I would make it out of Warbler, but it worked. And it looks so good, it looks so real together with this dress, really, I'm so happy. So now I just need to attach false lashes, add gloss to her eyes and lips, and we're done for today. And even though the bust of Nefertiti doesn't have any lashes, ancient Egyptians certainly did. And they used all kinds of makeup techniques to make their lashes darker and bigger. So I think my Nefertiti definitely deserves a pair of eyelashes. 
So guys, this is my Finnish Nefertiti doll and I don't even know what is more important today. The fact that she is Nefertiti or the fact that this is the very first new generation Monster High doll repaint on my channel. Like both of these facts are very exciting to me. I'm really happy I finally dared to make a Nefertiti doll. I wanted to make her for years and I'm really happy that all my experiments gave really good results today. I'm especially satisfied with her headpiece and also with her collar necklace, of course. Both of them were really new to me and that's why working on them was very interesting because, you know, I love trying new craft techniques. And I'm also happy about these new Monster High dolls as well. I really love the faces, the bodies, all the tiny details that these new dolls have. You can really see a lot of creativity in these dolls. I just wish they were a little bit more available for the rest of the world. So you will see me repainting more of these Monster High dolls very very soon. I'm really looking forward to repainting all of them. So and now I want to hear your thoughts on everything that was happening here in this video today. First of all, what do you guys think about the new Monster High dolls? Have you bought any of them or maybe planning to? Which one is your favorite? And also please let me know what you think about my Nefertiti doll. She is right now available for sale on eBay, so if you need a Nefertiti doll in your house, please check out the link in the description box under this video. And before I finish this week's episode, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace, a truly powerful website building platform. I've mentioned it already that I started working on my own website last month using Squarespace, and you know, guys, I think I'm ready to publish it. The website might be online even when you're watching this video. And honestly, I had really a lot of fun working on it. Everything was very easy, even for me, for a person with zero experience in website building. I had no problems with anything, really. I will still keep working on it, of course, adding all kinds of extensions. But right now, I think it's ready to launch. So I can recommend Squarespace to everyone who is thinking about creating their own website. If you need, for example, an online portfolio or thinking about starting a new online business, Squarespace has all the tools for your success. Squarespace offers you really powerful and modern blogging tools to categorize, share and schedule your posts and you can also create a community on Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and likes. Or you can also connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. For example, I'm planning to organize doll classes using this members only feature. You can manage your members, send email communications and also leverage audience insights all in one easy to use platform. And if this is still not enough, you can always extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools can help you manage your inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tags, and also ship items across the globe. So if you're thinking about creating your own website, you can try Squarespace completely for free. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash P-A-D-A-S, that stands for Popo Natalia Dollar Studio, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. And that was it. That was the doll transformation of the week. I really hope you've enjoyed it today. And if so, please guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, support my art here on YouTube with your likes. And of course, hit the bell button to get notified about my new doll repaint videos. And the next one will be, yeah, in a week. Next week, Friday, you will see my new doll transformation. That was it for today, guys. Have a nice weekend. Love you. Bye.